This conference will now be recorded. Hello, my name is Patrick Gilchrist. I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Glasgow. This is your drought and climate briefing for Eastern Montana. Today is July 26, 2022, and uh, let's get rolling. So we have had some significant uh, severe weather outbreaks across eastern Montana here in the last uh, month or so. Uh, most substantially across northeast Montana was the July 18th Glentana tornado. It was confirmed to be an EF2 tornado. Uh, went right through the community of Glentana. Uh, maximum winds are 120 miles an hour. Tornado track was about 8 miles, uh, 457 yard width. Uh, damaged a lot of outbuildings, uh, destroyed some machinery and some grain bins, uh, ripped the roof off of a couple of homes. But uh, again, the good news is, is uh, overall there were no injuries or fatalities reported, um, even with all the damage. So uh, good news from a human perspective, but unfortunately that uh, Glentana community is going to have to uh, recover from uh, some, some tornado damage. Uh, Billings also, uh, back on the 24th, just a few days ago, had a severe thunderstorm, uh, winds in excess of 70 miles an hour, and uh, some larger hail as well. Uh, of course, that hail, um, when combined with the heavy rain, um, you know, caused a little bit of debris, leaves and branches and such that clogged up uh, drainages and uh, uh, storm sewers and caused some flash flooding in and around Billings. Uh, rain reports uh, within an hour um, were somewhere between an inch and a half and three inches of liquid uh, spread across the area. There even was a fire that was uh, caused by lightning just to the north of Billings, but uh, luckily um, after uh, growing substantially and reaching about 70 acres inside, the wind shifted, it's 70 acres in size, the wind shifted and uh, caused the fire to diminish and taper off, blew it back on itself. So, so again, some substantial uh, storms out there um, over the last month or so. So looking at the last 30 days of precipitation totals, again, um, some significant uh, amounts of precipitation have occurred through a strip across central Montana, you know, Fergus County extending across Petroleum, Garfield, and then uh, towards the, the Big Sheep Mountain Range in uh, McCone, Prairie, and Dawson counties. So some decent precipitation totals there, but unfortunately a lot of this came uh, with severe thunderstorms, as is not um, totally uncommon uh, given the time of the year, this July time frame. If we do get good precip events, it does tend to come with thunderstorms. So again, some wind and some hail damage there as well. Um, so it wasn't all just uh, a nice liquid uh, rainfall um, that did come in spurts, but you can see some much needed relief um, brought to those areas. And you can see that elsewhere, you know, given the, the shower and thunderstorm nature of this precipitation, that some areas did not uh, receive uh, nearly as much precipitation. And again, it, it can be a little bit on the spotty side uh, when it comes to this uh, convective type precipitation. So with that, I also want to remind everybody that we are well into uh, July, turning the corner into August. This is uh, getting into our core fire season across eastern Montana. We have seen a little bit of an uptick in, in fire activity. This is the, the latest from the DNRC Interactive Wildland Fire Map. And you can see there are some fires that have occurred uh, across eastern Montana. And uh, looking at the forecast here, I would expect, uh, you know, continued warm and dry conditions to uh, maybe keep us moving towards a more active fire season. So, again, be careful out there uh, with any open flames or uh, any potential uh, mechanisms that could start a fire. Quick look back on June, uh, we did finish almost entirely for the state of Montana right near normal temperatures, you know, right near average right where we would expect to be. Uh, you can see that uh, especially shows up on the county map on the right that, uh, you know, really that white near average temperatures. It's interesting here is how Daniels County sticks out ever so slightly as being above average, just a little bit of an artifact, I think, there. I don't, uh, I don't know why they would stand out, but uh, you can see, again, right near average temperatures for the month of June. Uh, looking at the month of July, you can see we've been, you know, three to four, to maybe even five degrees above normal. So uh, we, we have turned that corner a little bit towards our, our summer months, and we are seeing some uh, warmer than average temperatures. And you can see that that swath, warmer than average temperatures, extends all the way up from Texas, all the way up along the Great Plains and into uh, eastern Montana. You can see a big chunk of the United States there finishing uh, above average temperature-wise for uh, July. Uh, precipitation for June, you can see again as the state as a whole finished right near average, but when you break it down by county, you can see it was a lot more spotty. 
uh, northwest Montana and then even northern areas along the High Line there seem to be doing a little bit better, finishing above average or even much above average for precipitation totals. Um, that coupled with an area in south central Montana, again, finishing above average. But uh, when you get away from that, um, southwest Montana all the way up through eastern Montana, you know, you're talking about near average or even uh, below average uh, precipitation ranks for the month of June. And again, June was our our wettest month, uh, that's when we need a, the bulk of our core precipitation. So unfortunately, um, you know, we didn't, we saw some precipitation, but uh, we could have used a, a lot more, especially for certain areas across uh, the eastern part of the state. Precipitation trends uh, for this month, and you can see that, uh, again, that area I was talking about, uh, you know, central Montana over through Fergus County and into uh, Garfield County and then into uh, eastern Montana, Prairie, Dawson, um, McCone and even portions of Weibo County doing a little bit better on the precipitation totals. Um, they have been getting uh, some some decent showers and thunderstorm activity here so far this month. But you can see, you know, area in northeast Montana and uh, the southern tier of Montana, you know, not doing nearly as well and finishing, uh, you know, below um, uh, normal on the precipitation totals uh, for the month of July. So year to date, uh, you know, you can see, if, again, if you average out Montana as a whole, we're finishing near average. But when you break that down by county, you can see there's a, some big differences. Again, far eastern Montana bordering the North Dakota border and then the southern tier of Montana. And then again, northwest Montana doing a little bit better um, on precipitation um, on the year. Again, a big swath for uh, west central Montana um, all the way across the Continental Divide and then even up along the High Line. Um, it, extending as far east as uh, Garfield uh, Valley and Daniels counties, again, finishing below average. So we're continuing to see the effects of overall dry conditions um, for uh, a, a lot of the area. So again, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. We have gotten some precipitation. Some areas have seen some precip, but uh, some a lot of areas just have not seen that. And of course, given how dry 2021 is, um, you know, we're certainly feeling the effects of overall long-term drought. So statewide average temperature ranks, uh, again, you can see largely near average so far on the year, January through June, and a couple of counties, again, along that northern high line route, um, finishing slightly above average, but as a whole, you know, state of Montana, eastern Montana, finishing near average temperatures. Uh, a specific look at climate snapshot at Glasgow and Billings, and uh, you can see Billings as a result of some of those recent precipitation events, specifically that one just a couple of days ago. Um, you can see that really propped up their overall precipitation totals and pushed them up above uh, to about 124% of normal precipitation, which is, again, a pretty good place to be. Um, on the flip side of that, Glasgow, um, we, we tend to still be on the dry side out here um, in Central Valley County. And you can see we're just about 79% of normal on the year. We are uh, just under two inches behind since January 1st. And again, um, while not ideal conditions it's certainly better than what we've seen um, you know over the last uh, you know 24 months or so especially when we get back towards 2021 which was so incredibly dry um, that this is an improvement but it's still worth noting that we are still behind and still um, reeling again um, as a result of being on the dry side of life uh, looking out um, at the big picture again january 2021 through june of 2022 you know just where are we at when you factor in the overall long-term drought conditions and you see a lot of areas still um, have not recovered um, fully from that and, and likely won't at least going forward even though they're they may be out of the the drought conditions you know plenty of woods only at 70 percent of normal um, Glendive 89% of normal, doing a little bit better there. Uh, Malta 69% of normal. Jordan 64%. Uh, Glasgow, though, I wanted to, to show some attention. You know, 57% of normal is all, and Brockway as well, 60% of normal. Those are the two driest uh, points across eastern uh, northeast Montana. Get a little bit bigger picture here. You know, Billings 86% of normal, and of course, this doesn't factor into that that recent precip event that stops uh, at the end of June. Uh, Miles City, 77%, Baker, 71%, uh, out in the central part of the state, Great Falls, 78%, Haver, 66 and Lewistown, 66 as well. Um, so again, uh, you know, we're still reeling as a, a, a function of the overall lo long-term drought picture here going all the way back to 2021. Um, with that said, our latest drought monitor, they have shown um, some significant improvements here over the last uh, few months across uh, far eastern Montana. Um, no doubt uh, due to some of the wet conditions that were seen uh, earlier 
uh, in the year. Um, but you can see, seeing, still seeing abnormally dry conditions uh, across uh, Phillips, uh, Petroleum Valley, Western Roosevelt, and Daniels County, still showing abnormally dry, which is a D0 drought. But uh, right now, the core of the drought, at least for Montana, is right across that north central regions. You can see um, uh, areas of Golden Triangle, you know, looking at D3 or maybe even D4 exception, D3 extreme drought to D4 exceptional drought. So still very much reeling and feeling the effects of uh, drought conditions out there um, in the central part of the state. So short-term forecast uh, today through Friday, uh, looks like we're overall going to be on the cooler side, max temps low to mid 80s. I'm um, looking for dry conditions, uh, generally a slow warming trend. However, by the time we turn into Friday, into early next week, we're going to see those hot conditions uh, returning to the region. Looking for high temps in the mid 90s to low 100s. It's going to definitely feel like summer out there. Uh, humidity is going to lower as well down into the teens and 20s, which of course is going to contribute to an overall drying of grasses and, and uh, fuels available for fire. So of course we've got to, you know, be, be careful out there um, when it comes to these dry conditions, hot and dry conditions. And we could see some uh, isolated storms starting to pop up, you know, mainly dry in nature. And, and by that, we mean they're not producing much in the way of precipitation. Um, starting Friday could linger through the weekend, could be an isolated storm or two. And of course, that's of concern because uh, lightning strikes, of course, can contribute to um, fire starts. So we'll have to be keeping a close eye on that. Eight to 14 day outlook still uh, favoring above normal temperatures. Um, you can see that, uh, you know, big pretty strong signal there across the uh, upper Midwest and that extends in eastern Montana as well for uh, good chances for hot temperatures to continue at least in the 8 to 14 day period that gets us into the uh, first week of August and then precipitation wise a little bit interesting there um, more normal type precipitation which of course uh, could you know maybe means isolated scattered shower and thunderstorm uh, from time to time which again is good news we can of course uh, use any precipitation we can continue to get and uh, uh, western Montana though favors uh, better chances for above normal precipitation it looks like the monsoon uh, kicks in and you can see that that big bullseye of above normal chances for precipitation extending from the four corners all the way up through the northern Rockies so um, looks like some monsoonal um, thunderstorms uh, could be expected during that time frame well, outlook for the drought um, this is getting out towards the end of October, and you can see that across uh, eastern Montana, the good news is, is there's uh, um, uh, not much call for a change in our overall, you know, abnormally dry or uh, no drought conditions across the east. Um, however, that uh, area in north central Montana, the drought is expected to persist, and then of course southwest Montana looks like uh, drought development is likely here uh, during that late summer, early fall period. August outlook. Uh, so this is for the rest of the month of August. Uh, you can see better chances for above normal temperatures, maybe the far northeast corner being more normal uh, temperature wise. And then of course, precipitation. Uh, you can see a big chunk of Montana favoring drier conditions, but uh, northeast Montana favoring more of the equal chances, maybe more normal um, precipitation chances. So again, we would take normal here at this point. Uh, that's not a bad thing. Three month outlook, September, October, November. You can see equal chances precipitation wise uh, for most of Eastern Montana, maybe just the far Southern tier there uh, favoring a little bit drier conditions, but uh, temperature wise, um, you see equal chances uh, for much of Eastern Montana, which would be more normal temperatures um, for that early fall months. And then uh, maybe a little bit warmer as you get into the Southern and Western portion of the state. Of course, our winter outlook, you know, this is getting uh, pretty far out there, but December, January, and February, it looks like uh, some potential for our third uh, La Nina winter in a row. Um, we'll be dialing that in, of course, as we get closer to it. But, you know, right now, um, no real strong signals uh, one way or another, just calling for equal chances, more normal temperatures, more normal precipitation outlook uh, for those core winter months of December, January, and February. But of course, uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on that as we get uh, closer to the winter months. So with that, that concludes our, our monthly climate briefing uh, for Eastern Montana. Uh, next briefing uh, will be on and around uh, August 18th of next month. We'll see you then. Thanks.